Hello, this is Dr. Mark Gordon. I'd like to welcome you to our first testimonial project where once a month a veteran will share their experience working with us in the Millennium Veterans TBI program. They will give you some personal backstory and then how their medical situation was assessed and treated along with their response. The first testimonial is from a Navy Lieutenant who started with us in late August 2023. His story follows. My name is Tim Kremmel. I was a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. I served aboard the USS Nassau and USS Nimitz as a nuclear propulsion and surface warfare officer. The symptoms I experienced started in 2020, where I had a sudden loss of strength in my right hand and right leg, followed in 2021, where my left eye experienced a partial loss of vision. Then in 2022, while traveling for work, I experienced a hallucination. In January of 2023, I experienced double vision, then in June of that same year, I experienced a complete loss of vision in my left eye. This prompted an MRI, which revealed that I had multiple sclerosis. After looking at my options, I declined the traditional medications and traditional disease-modifying therapies that would normally destroy my immune system. I saw a lot of depressing posts on social media about people using these medicines and they were struggling to walk, they were struggling with incontinence, and struggling with brain fog. I learned about Millennium Health by chance on my way home from my initial diagnosis. Feeling depressed and listening to Joe Rogan, episode 1589 autoplayed on Spotify. This featured Dr. Mark Gordon and Andrew Marr. Dr. Gordon talked about a Navy SEAL with MS that was 50% better after 60 days. When I got home, I reached out to Millennium Health through their website, and Dr. Gordon gave me a phone call the next day. My initial biomarker panel showed low normal IGF-1, low normal free testosterone, low estrone, estradiol, low normal pregnenolone, low normal FSH and luteinizing hormone, and low normal vitamin D. After starting Millennium Health's protocol, I immediately experienced rapid improvement with a 50% improvement after one month and a 90% improvement after three months. My energy levels are now steady throughout the day. I sleep better. The pains in my head and brain fog are gone. Most importantly, I have not had a relapse since starting Dr. Gordon's protocol. I did not take any medications from the VA. I'm currently a project manager who is happily married to a beautiful and loving wife with a two-year-old daughter that means the world to me. When I first talked to Dr. Gordon, the first thing he asked me was, what do you do if your house is on fire? Well, you put the fire out. Thanks to Dr. Gordon and Millennium Health, I put the fire out and have hope without debilitating pharmaceutical drugs. I am deeply grateful for everything that Millennium Health and Dr. Gordon have done for me. Thank you. When I received Tim's testimonial, it reinforced my belief that every illness, whether of body or mind, has an inflammatory cause. Neuroinflammation has been found to disrupt the ability of our brain to make myelin, neurosteroids, neurotransmitters, and maintain the integrity of the blood-brain barrier. With the onset of multiple sclerosis, cellular processes become compromised, leading to commonly occurring symptoms like loss of vision, muscular weakness, mood swings, memory loss, and fatigue. Frequently, these symptoms will completely resolve, but they can also return and become permanent. The fact that symptoms can come and go tells us that the body is trying to repair the damage. When symptoms linger, that's when we know the repair mechanisms are failing. As you will learn in this presentation, inflammation will impede the production of specific neurosteroids that are needed to shut down inflammation and to stimulate the oligodendrocytes to start the process of remyelinization of neurons. Tim's treatment protocol addressed both these issues and has led to his present level of recovery. The fact that he has not had a relapse in over 10 months is a very good sign, but we still need to be cautious and continue to monitor his progress. The medical literature addresses the association of concussions and subconcussive head trauma as predisposing young adults to a future risk of MS with a 30% risk factor, and this number can rise with each subsequent head trauma. 
Tim had two concussions at 18 and 29 years of age with loss of consciousness. Additionally, he was exposed to the rumble of jet engines, which is associated with something called mechanotransduction, where the low frequency and high decibel can cause activation of cells in the brain that produce pro-inflammatory cytokines. The brain is an important manufacturing center for many neurosteroids, such as pregnenolone, progesterone, allopregnanolone, DHEA, testosterone, and cortisol which are all used to regulate cellular function. Loss of these steroids can diminish myelin production and increase the level of neurodegenerative pro-inflammatory cytokines. This is a core element in the propagation of multiple sclerosis. The oligodendrocytes are the principal producers of myelin in the central nervous system. Their ability to produce myelin is shut down when in an environment of neuroinflammation as well as if there are deficiencies of the neurosteroids that prompt myelin production. Therefore, the approach to reestablishing myelin production and remyelinization of neurons is with a two-pronged approach, addressing neuroinflammation and neurosteroid deficiencies simultaneously. Multiple sclerosis is re frequently referred to as an autoimmune neurodegenerative disease affecting myelin production. This is my opinion, a misdirection, since the autoimmune characteristics of MS are a product of the causation and not the precipitating cause. Neurotrauma appears to be the cause, which can be triggered also by viral and bacterial infections of the brain. Nonetheless, consistent to multiple sclerosis is the finding of many autoantibodies against our own cellular proteins in our brain. An explanation for this is that there is a loss of blood-brain barrier integrity, which allows for the passage of peripheral immune cells into the brain. Once this occurs, these peripheral neutrophils and lymphocytes that have never seen the brain or brain proteins before see it for the first time and respond as though it was a foreign protein, thereby mounting an immune response with the production of autoantibodies, activation of microglia, and the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. These events are what eventually leads to the neurosteroid deficiencies with the loss of neuroprotection and myelin production, the foundational means by which MS is produced. The importance of peripheral and central production of neurosteroids is that they are protective as well as provide signaling for many cellular functions. In relation to multiple sclerosis, it is all about their ability to reduce neuroinflammation and to induce the production of myelin by the oligodendrocytes. The glial cells represented by astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and microglia, along with neurons, are capable of making neurosteroids. Unchecked inflammation can damage their ability to produce these hormones. Pregnenolone is the precursor to progesterone, and progesterone is the precursor to allopregnanolone. Pregnenolone is called the mother of all hormones, giving rise to over 35 neurosteroids, many of which have benefits to reverse the damage caused by neuroinflammation, such as found in multiple sclerosis. In experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, which is used to produce the neurological environment as that found in multiple sclerosis. It was found that progesterone reduces the pro-inflammatory cytokines and raises the anti-inflammatory cytokines. Part of its effect was to reduce the activation of microglial cells that produce the pro-inflammatory cytokines while enhancing the ability of myelin-producing oligodendrocytes to make myelin and reestablish the protective coating around neurons. DHEA is produced from pregnenolone and increases the production of brain growth factors that help both neurons and oligodendrocytes survive when challenged within an inflammatory environment. DHEA modulates this environment by decreasing the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines by the microglia, thereby improving the microenvironment that is more conducive towards remyelinization. 
Finally, DHEA helps immature oligodendrocytes to mature into myelin synthesizing cells to begin the process of remyelinization. As Tim said it, if there is a fire burning down your house, you put it out and then you rebuild. Thank you.